Hunting the Menu is proudly brought to you by the Sporting Shooters Association of Australia. Join us at www.sa.org.au. G'day and welcome to Hunting the Menu. Today we're smoking up a storm. Here's a little taste. Come on, mate, give me a bit. Oh. Boys, well, you asked me to organise a smoker. How about this bad boy? Now that's a smoker. <laughs> it definitely Corey, is. Corey, very impressive. <laughs> very impressive. Yep. She's a beauty. You know what they say? It's not what you know, it's who you know. No, I bet those old kings and queens in medieval times would have just loved that. You let me look at that. Oh, like you're I see what you're saying. This. That's why you wanted this, hey? Medieval feast. Correct, Amondo. <laughs> you imagine what they could have done this with this thing in the old times. Oh, unreal, isn't it? Look at it. <laughs> All right, Shane. Smoker like this, what are we going to fill it with? Mate, I think we've got a venison leg yep. from the last episode. Yeah, we we'll can put definitely that in there. have to put that in there, and I think we should possibly look towards a nice small pig, yep. a suckling pig, and maybe a goat, do you think? Yeah. I'd like the sound of that goat. What do you reckon, goat and pig? Yeah, my word. A leg word. of venison? Yeah. All right, mate, well, let's get organised. I'm going to give you back that. Yeah, I'll keep an eye on this while you're away. Yeah, you get that fired up for us, will you? I wouldn't keep mind. Keep it warm. Wouldn't mind. <laughs> can I go and have a look? Yeah, go and have a look. Shane, what an almost perfect start to a great morning, you know. We come up on those pigs, but they just, you know, the goats in the grass there caught us and spooked them. It was a good start, mate, yeah. You know? Unfortunately, there was quite a lot of goats in the long grass over here, but it would have been a nice start, but I'm sure we'll do OK this morning. Yeah, no, look, if it, it goes like this, you know, by this afternoon, we should have a couple of goats, a couple of pigs on ice. Yeah, know? definitely hope so, mate. It's looking pretty good, and there's a lot of feed in this paddock here. Looks a lot different to what it did a few months ago, though, doesn't it? Oh, yeah, look, we were here, what, two, two and a half months ago, it was green, it That's was right. lush, you know, it was actually hard to find the animals because there was so much food and water everywhere, but today, where are we going to pick them up? Mate, um, probably with this much feed around the edge of the creeks, like you can see here now, most of the creeks are starting to dry up. We've got a dam up the corner here, yeah. which we'll go and have a look. There's usually a few pigs in that okay. up near the dam. So we'll head up that way in a little while um, and just sort of try and get as much in as we can before the heat of the day takes over and okay. everything goes to ground. All right, let's get something for the smoker, huh? With over 7,000 acres to cover and a forecast temp of 41, time was not on our side. The key was to beat the rising sun, hunt the shaded areas and stay near water. Nice little porkers here. Okay. They should be perfect for us to do on that spit. Yeah, yeah, on the nice. barbecue. Nice. They're about 15, 20 kilos. Yep. They're starting to feed towards us. We've got wind coming down the gully towards us, so, yep. okay. which is perfect. Just want to be really careful walking through this stuff here, all the bark, yep. 
twigs and leaves and stuff, it'll be really noisy. Okay. One thing we'll have in our favour though is they've all got their heads down. They're really concentrated on feeding. Yep. And they make so much noise when they're feeding. Okay. Yeah. Their hearing's not very good. Their sense of smell is phenomenal though. Okay. Yeah, this stuff's like walking on cornflakes, mate. It is indeed. That's all right, they're busy feeding. They're not gonna notice it. It's incredible, isn't it? You know, most of the time, they get a whiff of you and bang, they're gone. But when they can't, that's right. You know, you can actually close some ground on them. Just come down here, mate. They're not going anywhere in a hurry. Yeah, they haven't even noticed this, mate. No. It's incredible. They're only about 10 or 12 kilo. They'll be beautiful for suckling pig. Yeah. Gosh, they're moving fast. They feed very quickly, don't they? They're like a lawnmower. Matt, that's a little bit uh, out of focus. Can you fix that for me? Yeah. How's that? Yeah, perfect, thank you. Parallax. Just try and pick the biggest one. Tell me when you're ready. I'm gonna make them stop and turn around. You ready? Oi! Oi, 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 oi! Oh, they're still moving, mate, so just I'll try and pull them up again, just try and take one of them. It's incredible, they're not taking any notice no. of you. Oi! Here we go, the head's up. Little black blotchy one, he's pulled up. Quick, quick. Oi, 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 oi! Nice. <sighs> Beautiful. His buddies are running? <laughs> he is. The thing that I really have enjoyed is the people. We're like a big family. In a day's training, I might go through anywhere between 300 and 500, possibly 600 rounds. I see uh, that firearms are an essential tool for the farmer. The first shot I ever did, it felt amazing. I felt glad that I actually did something that I felt passionate about. Check this guy out, Shane, huh? Yeah, nice little red belly. Yeah. I One mean, of the things you've got to keep your eyes open for when you're in this country, especially this time of the year. Yeah. Red bellies I'm happy with. It's yeah. The little brown ones that don't, I don't yeah. like too much. But... No, the browns you're in a little bit of trouble. This guy's going to make you sick, but the brown, you might not make it home, mate. Well, this heat, you know, the sun's just hit, hit and he's out, so. Yeah. He's pretty well charged. That's it. Eyes on the ground from now on, huh? Definitely. <laughs> on, would we be best to follow it or is that pretty much an impossible task? No. As you've seen now, there's, we've got goats spread out here for a couple of hundred metres, most of them are billies. Yep. The nannies and the couple of young ones are up in front. Okay. You can chase them around for miles and it's really not worth it. You better have to leave them undisturbed. Yep. Um, try and work out which way they're going maybe. Okay. And then head around and sort of meet up with them and cut them off. But we've got goats all through this country so it's, you know, we're better off to leave them. There's yeah. no point chasing them. You can see how eaten down it is under those trees. And they're yeah. fruit trees, they're apples. Okay. And quinces, I think. And a lot of these animals won't leave that because it's such good feed for them. 
Okay, and because of the food here, there's a good chance they're going to come back later this afternoon, maybe? Oh, definitely, they'll be back, for sure. Okay. Yeah. It's a matter, if you leave them undisturbed, mate, they, they'll hang around. Okay. Well, maybe come out here to do a little bit of spotting, and uh, there's about ten little ones. They look like they've lost their mum. Oh, mum will be around somewhere, mate, but they're a little bit small for us. They'd make beautiful suckling pig, they'd bake tall, but yep. I think we'll try for something a little bit bigger. Yeah, they don't even seem to be worried about us at all. No, what, how many is there, nine or ten? How many uh, look, they're all grouping up. I can see two, four, six, seven, eight, I can see nine, about eight or nine. nine. You know, again, an indication of how much damage they can do. There's nine piglets there. We saw, there was four in the first mob where we took that first pig. Yep. We saw four again. Yep. There's another nine here. That's 17 pigs in a few hours. Yeah. So. The numbers are, are quite surprising. Yeah, and look, only a couple of months ago, this area was really green. So, right. I mean, they would have bred up in that time, I imagine. Yes, that's right, and that's why you probably see in that whole lot there, those nine piglets there are probably all from the same litter because they're virtually all exactly the same size. Yep. I'd say they're from the whole litter. So that's just from one sow, well, nine piglets. Well, you know, they're quite destructive. I mean, they're, 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 they eat right down to the roots. They take the whole thing. They that's basically right. kill a paddock, huh? Exactly, digging up the ground and wrecking fences again. This is the middle of the day, sort yeah. of thing, you know, late morning sort of thing, lunchtime, and they're walking around the middle of the paddock. Shane, well, you were right about not having to chase those other goats. I mean, over every rise, there's another pack of them. Exactly right, mate. There's some big mobs here in this country. You know, down here in front of us, we've probably got, what, two, three hundred goats? Yeah. Well, you were saying to me earlier that a property like this could probably carry about four, four and a half thousand uh, sheep. That's right. You know, a couple of hundred goats, that must really affect their sort of stocking rates. Well, that's exactly right, mate. It all takes away the sheep's water, you know. Like, look, mate, they do so much damage. You can see behind us where they've dug holes, where all the holes under the fences. Yeah, yeah, okay. You know, those fences were all put in to keep the sheep and cattle in, and they just destroy them. Yeah. You know, the, the posts are bent. There's all the big drag marks where they come underneath. Okay. So they do do a fair bit of damage. and It's just constant cost, isn't it, really? Exactly, mate. It's exactly right. And you can see how many there are. Uh, hopefully these little mob down here will settle down and should be able to take a nice meat animal or two, eh? All right, we'll move up on them. Yeah. When you're doing this, yeah. coming over a little rise like this, the yeah. wind's blowing in our face, which is perfect now. But you... Do your best to take a few steps and stop yep. and look and wait because what can happen quite often if the animals have got their heads down over a rise and yep. you walk up too quickly, they lift their heads up, they've got you. Okay. So you don't really want to rush it. All right. Now they were working their way down towards the dam away from us, which is a good thing. Yep. But you've just got to be really careful when you're going over rises. Okay. Now well, that wind in your face is fantastic at this point. Oh, the breeze is nice too. It is. It's a bit cool. <laughs> yeah. They reckon you was going to hit 41 today. So we might want to get this job done pretty soon. That's exactly right, mate. We'll get one done and get it cleaned and packed on ice as quickly as possible. OK. Just get set up down here. I'll just go to this. They're not paying any attention to us at all. As no. you can see, the young billies are playing amongst themselves quite. It's good that they're distracted like that, huh? They are, aren't they? So the one with the white band, mate's having a drink? The one with the white saddle, yeah. If he stays still long enough, mate, he's a young billy, so that'd be a nice animal to take. No. No. He's, he's gone. He's, he's moving off. I can't get a clean shot on him. OK, it's all right, just wait. OK, so now you've got that grey, long-haired one now down the edge of the dam having a drink. Yep. That's another young billy, but he should be about a good size to eat, yeah. so chamber around, mate. You all right? Yep. Take your time, mate. Yep. All right. OK, when you're ready. Right in his forehead. OK, mate, I'm going to take him. Oh, straight down, mate. Good job, mate. Awesome. He'll be a really nice one for the smoker. Yeah, that's going to be great in the smoker. Oh. Perfect size, huh? Very good, mate. Can't wait to see what you and uh, Dorso are going to uh, flavour these with. <laughs> <laughs> they will come up nice, mate, that's for sure. No worries. Grab your binos. Grab your With two nice animals already on ice and ready for the smoker, we had just enough time to take one more for the freezer before the mercury hit 43.
When I'm not hunting, I'm thinking about hunting. It's on my mind because it's in my blood. When the hunt calls, my TC Venture points the way. Accurate, reliable, proven. Until there's no more ground to cover and no more stories to tell. When you're a TC Venture hunter, the hunt never ends. So this afternoon, Andrew and I are going to do a couple of different styles of marinating. Andrew's going to do a goat. I'm going to do a small pig that we've got here. The smoke truck's being set up behind us. So we're just going to quickly do a basic rough marinade here, get it in overnight. Tomorrow it should come out and go really well in the smoke truck. What I'm going to do is pretty much a barbecued Chinese pork, the same red pork that you see in a lot of the Chinese dishes. It's the same sort of a um, marinade. So the first thing we're going to do is we're just going to add about two cups of sugar, just plain white sugar. We're also going to add about two cups of brown sugar, one big spoonful of ginger, like so, and about the same, maybe twice, garlic. Doesn't matter if your marinade's quite strong, because remember, it's on the outside of the meat, and it's going to gradually drip off as it cooks. Into that, we're pretty much going to use a whole jar of honey, and we're going to also add three teaspoons, maybe, of Chinese fire spice. To that, we're going to add some ketchup mains, two or three cups full. Now, the Chinese do cheat a bit with that nice colour. They use red food colouring. We're going to do the same thing. You can get it in powdered form or you can just use it in liquid form like we're doing. Probably go one full bottle to start with and we'll give it a bit of a mix and we'll just see what colour it sort of ends up. So we'll just give it a bit of a whisk. As you can see, it's got a nice red colour to it. And hopefully, that's the colour that the pork should turn out. Now we're going to get our pig out. Beautiful little pig, as you can see, no fat. So it's one of the important things to try and marinate them or coat them to keep them nice and moist and tender. First thing we're going to do is we're going to split down the brisket. Open it up like that. Now, when you get to this part, you can see you can't open it out flat. So what we're going to do is you can either use a tomahawk, you can use a meat cleaver like we've got in the hammer. We're going to just gently split down the rib bone, right down the backbone, and that'll help it lay out. We're also going to cut down through the pelvis. Again, just to open it up like so. Okay, so now we've got a nice butterfly pork. We're just going to give our marinade a little bit more of a whisk. And then we're just going to add it to the pig. Pour it over the top. A little trick, if you can't get rubber gloves that are going to fit your hands, get a couple of freezer bags. It'll just save you getting that colour all through your fingernails and all over your hands. Get in there now, get your hands dirty. Get plenty of this stuff all over our pig. Don't worry about the underside of the pig too much because the marinade will run down towards the bottom. We're just making that sure that's nicely all over the pig. Right, so there we go. There's our marinated barbecue pork, soon to be smoked and barbecued. Okay, we've got our nice little pig in our Chinese barbecue marinade in the esky. We're also going to do a venison leg that we took last week in our last episode. Venison is also very dry, so what we're going to do is similar to a larding process. We're going to cut slices into the meat and force it with um, some herbs that we've got roughly cut here and just some quickly chopped garlic. And also some speck, which is just smoked pork belly. It's really important with venison and your wild goat and your pork to try and keep it as moist as possible in the cooking process, otherwise they have a tendency of drying out. Now for the goat. Bear in mind that all the way through hunting the menu, one of the most important messages that's coming through is that the capture of these animals is sustainable hunting, hunting for the table, as it's been done through time. The other strong message is that these animals are lean and healthy. All of them are excellent for a modern lifestyle. They're lean meat. So consequently, as you saw earlier with Shane, we have to add some fat. This goat, I'm going to use another method, which is to wrap it in fatty bacon. This gives us the pork fat, which is excellent, but it also gives us room for flavor. I've got rosemary in the herb selection, and so I've chosen to use the rosemary stalks as my pins to hold the bacon in place. 
We'll just do that until we've used up all the bacon, roll the goat over and start on the other side. Now, some of the rosemary stalks that I've left, I've left the rosemary itself on. It'll actually infuse even more flavor. So we're gonna do a yogurt infusion. Any good Greek natural yogurt will do. And what we're going to do is add some fennel seeds and we're gonna add some paprika. That'll give it a little bit of color, but it'll also give it a little bit of spice. We've got some chopped up rosemary leaves and we're gonna put in nicely chopped up garlic. Now, the aim for this is to infuse the carrier, which in this case is the yogurt. This yogurt is going to carry all of those flavors of the fennel, the paprika, the garlic, and the rosemary, and it's going to infuse the surface of this animal, the goat. Now we're gonna use a brush for this. I'm gonna brush this side first, and I'm just gonna open up and do a little bit around the side of the cavity here. A bit like slip, slop, slap. Now notice this is on a spread out garbage bag. The aim here is that every little bit of marinade, every little bit of rub, every little bit of yogurt and all its beautiful herbs and spices are contained. Just finishing this off and when it comes out of the fridge, gets into the smoker and onto the barbecue, this will be a perfect addition to the, to the venison and the pig for a long leisurely dinner. Here at Swarovski Optic, a lot of time is spent on perfecting a few great things until every idea we touch enhances every moment in the field. For a quarter century, the Swarovski Optic SLC has been making hunters' dreams become reality. Feel the wilderness every time you step outside. So Reese, this thing's fantastic. A beast like this has to have a name. What is it? Yeah, mate, we've affectionately called the truck Bronson. Bronson. All right, so tell me Bronson's story. Well, uh, we found the truck in a paddock down in Geelong. Yeah. And this is it in its former glory. OK, OK, That's a photo well. taken in 1970, delivering wool to yeah. the market in Melbourne. Not very overlated there, mate. <laughs> <laughs> Probably not too dissimilar to the smoking now. Yeah, yeah. This was the state that we found it. Oh, wow. So you didn't have to do too much work to it. <laughs> <laughs> no, not really. And how long did it take to get to this stage? It took about nine months yeah. to get it to this stage yeah. and then a further six months to get the custom-made smoker on the back. Okay, now the smoker like this, it's quite impressive. How many people can it feed? Full capacity, I reckon we could feed 2,000 people. Okay, wow, wow. And uh, look, tell me, it, there's a lot of things you've probably put through, but what's your favourite thing that you put in this smoker? We're getting a bit of a name for our beef brisket. 16 hour iron bark and pecan smoked beef brisket. It's uh, as good as it gets. Well, making my mouth water, mate. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, the things we're cooking today are fairly lean, you know, so you'll have to talk to Shane and Dorso about how we get a the best out of that. A bit more difficult, I think, but yeah. we'll get there. Yeah, fantastic. All right, well, let's get it fired up and uh, get it smoking, huh? Let's do it. Here we go. All right, so Reese, tell me a bit about this smoker, mate. How does she work? Well, uh, we're at the temp now. We've got the firebox down the end here that we fill that with iron bark. Yep. And what happens is there's a baffle plate that runs three quarters of the way through to here. And the hot air and the aromatic smoke flows through, heats up the chamber, cooks the meat, and goes out the top. A recycling. going. Yeah. Very good. Awesome. Right, so we've got our venison down the back there that's been larded with spec. We've got our Chinese barbecue style pork. And we've got our goat that's wrapped in bacon and done with um, yogurt. Which one do you think we should get in first, mate, and where do you want to start? Yeah, I reckon we'll throw the goat in first. Yep. Um, it's important to hear, because this is game and there's lower intramuscular fat, we've got it wrapped in bacon. Yep. We'll throw it in the first chamber. Yep. And then we'll go through with the pig and the venison because it's quite delicate. Right, cool. Right, mate, that's the goat in. Let's get this little pig in. Now he's been split down the middle, so yeah, he might be a bit easier. Beautifully butterflied. Okay. You can hear that sizzle on the grill. Already. That's perfect. Nice. Now, did we just pop the venison in that one too, mate? Yeah. Yep. So, venison leg. Let's roll. Is this wind going to make much difference to the smoker or not? It shouldn't, 
but uh, if we excessively open the door, it will. Yeah. They generally say, if you're looking, you ain't cooking. Not cooking. Righto, put that down. Yeah. Shouldn't have too much heat out. So when you reckon about 40, 45 minutes smoke, and then we'll crank it up? Well, we'll have a look in about 45 minutes, and we'll see how we go. Yeah, cool. Okay, guys, come on, let's go. Dinner's up. Let's go. Check this out, Dorse. Shane, you have excelled yourself this time. What have we got here, Corey? Look at that pork. We've annihilated the venison. <laughs> yeah, oh, the venison's got long gone. <laughs> Can I have Reese, a bit of this? Yeah, reach that truck. It's that sensational. Amazing. Thanks, mate. We're going to have to have you guys back, and I think we're going to have to fill this truck next time. Mate, it'd be absolute pleasure, man. Let yeah. you know. No worries. How is it, mate? It's as good as I've ever had, yeah. yeah. Pretty unreal. I think we've done uh, this uh, lean game meat justice, I think. Good job, boys. All right, mate, I think it's about time you and I had a bit of this. Let's get some. Come on, boys, come in here and try this. Put that camera down. All right, who wants to try something, honey? There you go, there you go. There you go, Chow. Get in there. Oh, look at you go. Hell, let's try some, buddy. There you go. Oh, that's good. All right, here we go. Check this sorry, out. Sorry, what's the other channel? Do it. Well, hang on. <laughs> oh, sorry, mate. <laughs> Hunting the Menu, proudly brought to you by the Sporting Shooters Association of Australia. Join us at double s double a dot org dot au